Hi guys, in this video, I'm going to cover the chapter three questions. So take a look at the first question. An economy has a national income $1,200 and the consumption is $600 and taxes are $200. So Y equals 1,200, consumption C is a 600 and then the tax is 200. Okay? And then the government purchase is $300. Given that, the question wants you to find the national saving. I want you to recall the national saving is a private saving. So private saving is a your disposable income minus consumption, the laptop over. And then the public saving is a T minus G. And I told you these taxes are canceled out. So then you have a Y minus C minus G. So the answer is 1200 minus 600 minus government spending 300. Then the answer is 1200 minus 900, which is a 300. So the answer is the first one. Let's move to the next question here. This is a theoretical question. And I told you when you hire workers or the, when you have the capital, you always compare the benefit and cost, okay? So when the benefit is a greater than cost, so then you need to hire a worker or the, you need to buy the capital. Okay, but then when the benefit is less than the cost, then you don't need to hire workers. That means that you need to fire the layoff, the workers, okay? Or you need to sell the capital, or you don't need to buy the capital. Now here, then the question is, uh, what's the benefit? How do we measure the benefit? And then the benefit is a marginal product of labor for the labor and for the capital, we have a marginal product of capital. But this question is about the labor. Okay. And then the cost of the labor is uh, the real wage. Okay. Now, question number A, it says that over the past century, the productivity of farmers has risen substantially due to technological progress. According to the neoclassical theory, farmers real wage should have increased. Because of the benefit, the NPL increase, right? So then the wage has to be increased too. Okay, so that's why the answer is an uh, increase. Then the following question, now the productivity of barbers has remained constant. That means the wage has to be, stays the same. So the answer is remained constant, okay? Now move to the next question here. So same as the very first question, the saving, uh, you can easily calculate now. So the national saving is a Y minus C minus G. So Y is given as 1200. And then the consumption is 800 and government purchase 200. So then the answer is a 200. Now the public saving is T minus G and the T is a 150 and G is a 200. So we have a negative 50. So you may think that negative 50 is a weird, but that is okay because a public saving is a negative. That means that this government faced a budget deficit, okay? Budget deficit. So they spend more than their income, okay? So that is a budget deficit. Now, private saving is a your disposable income minus consumption. So 1200 minus tax 150 minus government purchase, I'm uh, sorry, the minus consumption 800, then it gives you the 350, okay? Then question number D, all of a sudden question ask you to find the equilibrium real interest rate. But here's the intuition. This is a closed economy and in a closed economy model, saving equals investment. Why is that? You cannot invest more than your saving because you cannot borrow from outside the country, right? So that being said, the saving has to be the same as an investment or you can derive it, this relationship. How? Well, now you know that saving equals a Y minus C minus G, okay? But there is a, uh, the demand of the output, which we studied, uh, give me one sec. Yeah, Y equals C plus I plus G. This is closed economy, and the demand of the output is the same as consumption plus investment plus government spending. Now, when you shift C and G to the left hand side, then what happened? Y minus C minus G equals investment. What do you see? When you compare these two, you realize a saving equals investment. We good? Then, because we found the saving, which is a national saving, is a 200, the left-hand side. And then the right-hand side, the investment is given as 300 minus 20R. And also you can see that the inverse relationship between the investment and interest rate because of this negative sign. Interest rate goes up, then the investment goes down. 
Anyway, so the left hand side, the saving is a 200 and the right hand side, the investment is known as 300 minus 20 R. So we have a one equation, one unknown, so that you can find the solution. So here 20 R equals 100, that means that R equals five. So the equilibrium interest rate is a five. Okay. Now the question number E, it says that if the government increases its purchase to 240, what is a new equilibrium reinterest rate? Then you need to recalculate the saving. So saving is a Y minus C minus G. Y is a 1200. Consumption is 800. Now the government spending or the government purchase becomes 240. Then the saving is 160. So then it's the same question. The saving equals investment, but numbers are changed. Then 20 R equals 140, that means that R, the interest rate is a seven, okay? So that's the answer. Now here we have a one last question. We have a cop Douglas production function, Y equals 100 times a K to the power of one third times L to the power of two third, okay? And then the economy has a 125 units of the capital. So the K equals 125. And then the labor, we have a 64 workers, okay? And then the question asks you to calculate the economy's output. So the question is very simple. You just need to plug in the numbers into the equation. So that being said, Y equals 100 times 125 uh, to the power of one third times uh, L, the 64 to the power of two third. Uh, for your information, this 125 is a five to the power of three, and then the 64 is a four to the power of three, or you can say that two to the power of six, okay? So that means a hundred times uh, five times as four to the power of three to the power of two third, that is hundred times five times 16. So that is 8,000. So the answer is 8,000. Now, what is the capital share of the income alpha? I told you when by having this Coptogos production function, Y equals A times K to the power of alpha, L to the power of one minus alpha. And in this case, alpha is a one third, okay? And then one minus alpha labor share of the income is two third, okay? And by the way, this A captures a technological level. So A is high, that means that it's uh, probably the other best country. Now, the last two questions ask you to find the MPK and MPL. So I told you by definition, MPK is F of the K plus one minus F of K. So what do you see? You fix the number of the workers, but you increase one more capital and see what happens to the output. That's the MPK. Okay? So this difference by definition is the MPK. So then in order to find the answer, you need to find the output with K equals 126. So you have a one more capital, one more machine and see what happens to the output. So that being said, you calculate, let's say the Y2 is 100 times 126 to the power of one third times 64 to the power of two third. And this one is actually giving you 8,021.3 up to one decimal. Okay. And then you can see the difference with the 8,000 is just 21.3. Likewise, you can find the MPO. So let's say the Y3, but 100 times 125. So I don't touch the uh, capital 125, but then for the labor, now you have a 65. So one more work and then calculate this one. Then after you find this one, you subtract with the 8,000, then you can find the answer. Okay, let me stop here.